Sean says a lot of things that are like factually incorrect. <laughs> and I call him on this routinely. What up, everyone? Shaquille Mahjudi here for CBS Sports. And you know who this is. He is the UFC's number 14 ranked middleweight contender headlining UFC Vegas 90 on Saturday against Brendan Allen. He's brought some backup today. And candidly, I'm surprised that a man who hangs out with Sean Strickland can have this much happiness and enthusiasm. Chris <laughs> Curtis, how's it going? What's up, man? No, it's funny because, like, Sean was terrified to hold him still. Like, we'll not hold him. Like, he's terrified. He'll come over and look at him. We'll not hold him. <laughs> so that's... That is the same fear I have with my, like, dog for when I have a child is that I can't get them to get along. Wait, so why won't Sean hold Barrett? He's just like, ah, I don't know, man. Like, he'll start sweating and run away. <laughs> like, yeah, he literally tear him out of a baby. Like, he'll start, he'll break out into a sweat and he'll run away. This is this is already heading in the direction I hope this interview would. Yeah, it's it's hope, absolutely hilarious. I hope Sean's doing well. Hey, um... I think this is the first, I think we've probably like exchanged some DMs or tweeted back and forth a little bit. I feel like this is the first time we've done an interview. Are you are you always in such a like a pleasant, optimistic mood? No, no, no. Just when I'm fighting. Like outside of this, it's it's uh it's the minute, the minute depressing energy. I think this week, fortunately, I'm having a manic upswing, which is great. Like so it's always bad when you're depressed on fight week. But this week I've been really manic, so that's great. Like got extra energy, I feel wonderful. So I am really bubbly this week because uh, I get to fight. I'm in a manic phase. It's, it's pretty great. Use that mental health to your advantage this week. Yeah, you, 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 you got to learn the game system. Like You, you got to game the system. Hey, I, uh, when I talked to Sean ahead of 297, I had him like rate people he found annoying in the fight game on a scale of 1 to 10. You did not rank as high as Ian Machado, Gary, but you did get a 7 or 8. Why do you think it is that you get under Sean's skin so easily? Because Sean says a lot of things that are like factually incorrect. <laughs> and I call him on this routinely. Like Sean also, Sean and I have very different mentalities when it comes to training sometimes. And I call him on it and he'll shoot it down. Like, for example, I'll, I'll recommend things. He's like, no, 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 we're not doing this. And it's a running joke in the gym because about a week later, so, but okay, we should be doing this. And I'm like, this is exactly what I said. But because I said it, he doesn't want to acknowledge it. But about a week later, he's like, oh, we should be doing this. And I'm just like, it's a running joke. And we're like, how long before like this comes back up as Sean's idea, which was clearly my idea. So like, no, he, I call him on his bullshit constantly and he hates it. Yeah, I, I, I know I have people in my life who if I just if I just want to get from point A to point B, I have to make them think it was their idea the whole time, you know? I mean, I I wish you could see how much, how many times I make suggestions. And he's like, no, 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 I'm not, we're not doing that. Only for him to eventually like come around. But we should be doing that. I'm like, it's fine. Uh, in the interest of fairness, I want to give you the chance to rate Sean on a scale of one to ten on the annoying factor. Uh, he's a three because I don't. I I've known Sean for too long to where there are times he says things I just walk away. <laughs> like I. I do not allow it to bother me at this point in my life. <laughs> I have learned that, like, when Sean is going off into a Seanism, just leave. <laughs> like, you, he'll, he'll probably follow you for a little bit, but if you don't engage him and fight back, you'll lose interest. Okay. So, like, yeah, I, I've mastered getting with Sean years ago. I like it. I like it. Um, what sort of was going through your mind when this offer came up to step in on a few weeks' notice and fight Brendan Allen? Was there? What are some, I guess, the risk reward things that you factor, or is it just like action man? Let's go. What are they paying me? I'm like, okay, are, are they paying me more? Okay, let's go. Like, I I love fighting, man. Um, I love fighting. And so that's a fun thing. I, I really love. I love to fight. I'm more comfortable fighting and doing anything else. And like, um, who was it? It was Volkanovski said it the best, man. And he's like, when I don't have a fight, I'm lost. Yeah. Like so, like that that time between fights. You know you need it. You should spend time with family, working on things. But I'm absolutely lost, man. Like, I train seven days a week, year-round. So I'm never really out of shape. I'm never not ready. And honestly, I'm at my happiest when I have a fight mm -hmm. coming up or I have something in front of me. It's, it's just I spent so much of my life trying to get to this point and you know, being Chris the fighter that I kind of feel just at ease. Like, when I get I have a fight, but I'm – almost to the fight and then when i'm in the cage like these are my like, happy times so 
I love being there. So I'm, I'm always going to raise my hand. Like, you know, there are some times to when it's probably uh, better that I didn't, but I'm still going to raise my hand because I love what I do. Uh, I, I know I don't need you to like go into the fine details of it, but just for like my own understanding, you know, I know like when a UFC fighter signs a contract, it's this amount of pay, X number of fights. What happens when the UFC comes in on short notice? Is it just like a bonus for this one fight? Well, it, it, it's it's different, but like, so I have had, this is my eighth UFC fight, I think. I, I've i signed multiple contracts because a lot of times when short notice contracts, like they'll, if they're not bumping you, they'll give you a new contract. Gotcha. Because like, especially depending on like how the fight was signed, whatever, like the UFC takes care of you. So it, it's funny because like people, the UFC gets a really bad rap, but the UFC has gone above and beyond taking care of me. When I do stuff like this and like the UFC always takes care of me. So like, um, yeah, like, I, like, what am I getting paid? Cool. What's going on? And like the, the pay and the bonuses fit. So I'm like, why not, man? Like I'm eight fights in and I don't even know what contract this is. Like maybe like three or four, <laughs> three or third or fourth contract. So I love it. Like, I absolutely love it. So why not take the risk? You know, it's so it's so interesting because you're in such a good mood and, you, you know, you've expressed how happy you are when fight time comes around. I was going to ask you, like, how would you describe Chris Curtis's mindset and emotions heading into the Jack Hermanson fight when you were on that eight fight winning streak versus now where, you know, um, sometimes not even at your fault, like with the Nasruddin Imavov fight, it's sort of been inconsistent. Like, how would you con con contrast those two Chris's? Going into the Jack fight, I it was weird. I felt great. Everything was great. That was more so one of those things to where I didn't think about With, with the Jack fight, I'll say this. I definitely overestimated my ability to just roll with things. Mm. Like, it was on two weeks' notice. I had one week to train. Then I had to fly travel, right? So the only issue was Puna and the other guys fought in Jersey the week before, uh, the week, the first week. So I had none of my training partners or coaches there. I so see. it was like me and like a 55 wrestler. And I was like, Jack's a wrestler. It's fine. You know, I'll just wrestle. Because like, we just fought, uh, we just fought, uh, no, uh, God, there's a super giant Brazilian, Hadolfo. Yeah, we just fought Hadolfo. Oh, and we had a wrestling you open. I can't help you right now. Chris. Yeah. The, the Hadolfo camp and fight was really hard. It was really, really hard, but I was back in the gym pretty fast. And I felt okay training, so I assumed I'd be okay. I probably should have rested more. And we had a wrestling camp for that. I was like, Jack's a wrestler. It's fine. Like, you know, we can do this. And there's just so many intangibles, like between that, they fly across the flying 12 hours, different time zones, all that training out there. It was just, there were more intangibles than I accounted for. And I, I probably should have given it more respect, but I, I felt I was confident. I was like, I can go out there and do it. Losing that fight kind of hurt because I felt like, I, I didn't get, I, I wasn't like hurt. I wasn't nothing. I just, I just, I just lost the fight. And that kind of killed all that momentum I built. And that was frustrating. Yeah. So you try to rebuild and do things and like, but now you've got the bad taste of that in your mouth because, you know, you, you can, like, I don't, you know, you're not supposed to, but you start listening to all the fucking people mm. in the bleeding the peanut gallery chirping. And, you know, you got people who've never stepped foot in a cage before or people who have like two amateur fights telling you what you did wrong or what you can't do. And like normally you it's whatever. Like it never bothered me before, but now like we're on a stage to where there's thousands of people watching you. There's now you get it from thousands of different directions, like ten thousand people telling you you did this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. And that kind of wears on you. So like you start to question, like, okay, like am I doing this wrong? What's going on? So then going into other fights, like you're trying to you're trying to correct that. You got that that loss in the back of your mind. And it's just frustrating. So like I feel like I kind of ended up being spotty because. I really stopped being me for a while. I got, and then when you get ranked, it gets worse. Cause when you get ranked, you kind of, you develop a, you learn a fear that you didn't have before. Nobody wants to lose a fight, <clears throat> but once you get ranked, nobody wants to lose a ranking. So now you have an extra fear on top of that. So that was a fear I hadn't taken into account. So once you get ranked, like now you're even more paranoid and you know, the chirping, chirping, chirping never stops. And, you know, I, I think I kind of hit an like, inconsistent patch because I was trying to be too many things at one time. But I just I stopped enjoying the fight. I stopped looking forward to it. Now I'm just afraid to lose. And I think the last fight with Mark Andre was the last. I was like, you know, I don't care. 
Like, I, I don't care. You can take this fucking ranking. I don't care. Like, she's my language. You can take this rank. I don't care. I just want to go fight. Like, I hate that I let people in just circumstance take away from me the thing that I love the most. So I, I just, I'm just, I'm just not worried. Like, if I, I'm, I want to win, I let my paycheck. But if I lose, I've lost before, I'll go again. And that, that's a very freeing, like, place to be. I uh, yeah. So that last sentence about um, not letting other people sort of strip you of your passion was very real. I was having this conversation this morning. Uh, are you on Twitter too much? I that's my Twitter's gone. Like yeah. yeah, I don't. I so a big thing for me is realizing that like people just suck and people people are miserable, and especially people who can't do are going to criticize. Mm -hmm. So I need people who can't teach, people who can't criticize. That's what they do. So for me, a big thing is like, you know, like, like I said, I'm just not someone who was ever used to that. So having it come from thousands of different directions is a lot. So now, you know, I got my Twitter's gone. I only got on that briefly to help fundraise for something for a kid that got hit by a car. But then I, the Twitter's gone again. My Instagram, uh, I'm on sometimes, but even then it's very limited to who I interact with and who can interact with me. Because at the end of the day, protecting my peace and my mind and like my mental is like the most important 100%. thing to me because like I've, I've got a family and this is how I provide for my family. This is how I do everything. So people get like, oh, you, like you know, he blocks people or well, you know has only certain people to comment. I'm like, yeah, because this is protecting my peace. And my ever since I've kind of taken these steps, I'm a lot better off. I'm a lot happier. Uh, you know, we, we limit my interactions with people and stuff like that. Social media, so I'm, I'm a lot happier for it. Uh, as we wrap up here. Will Sean be in your corner or involved in this coming? No, he's got he's got family stuff uh, okay. going on. Well, I was, so was going to ask. Uh, um, sorry, not to, I just I don't want to make sure I get you out of here on time. Uh, how would you describe your sort of feelings towards Brandon Allen and vice versa? Because uh, I know Sean's not a big fan. And if I'm not mistaken, now that I'm saying it out loud, I feel like you guys have done some chirping at the Apex. They they've had beef. I think uh, last time I saw Sean bring together, I think they kind of got over it. To where, you know, there's once again, Sean is Sean. Sean is abrasive. And Brandon's young. He's got a chip on his shoulder. That's not going to go well anytime. Brandon, I've hung out with Brandon at PI. We've had lunch, we had food together. Cool. You know, cool. well, his, I've trained at his gym. I'm really good friends with uh, his, one of his good friends, Suko, who's a guy I absolutely love. I've got nothing respect, with respect for Brandon. He said yes. He took it. Even after this fight, he picked himself up and, you know, he, he rebuilt. And he went forward. I've got nothing but respect and love for that. At the end of the day, I'm not fighting anyone because I hate them. Like, honestly, sad as it sounds, I hate myself more than I'll ever hate anybody else fighting. So I've got no issue with like, with like fighting you because I hate you. I fight because I love fighting. Like, this is my thing. And he's the guy across from me. I'm pretty sure he's the same way. We've all got goals. We've all got, you know, our dreams. And that's how we fight. So I got number of respect for him, but at the end of the day, I've got to go out here and my job and my passion is hurting people. So it's nothing personal, but you know, it's what I do, it's what I love. Hey, is Nickelback actually your favorite band? Yes. Yes. Nickel Nickelback got me through my high school years. Like I shit you not. Like I don't listen to them much anymore, but they will hold that spot because without Nickelback, I was like, oh man, I was losing my nine. You know, you know who was there for me? Nickelback. Nickelback was there. No matter what's going on in your life, Nickelback has a song about it. And you're like, you're like, okay, this is fun. So they're, they've been there. Nickelback did nothing wrong. It's just popular to hate Nickelback because of the internet. They've done nothing wrong. And all and everyone who hates Nickelback, like everyone at my age or whatever, you hate them because there was a time when you were broken and Nickelback was there for you. And you don't want to admit it. I still know every word of Rockstar by heart. They yeah, are from I, I, my hometown of it. Did you get? The, you, yeah. I wish we could have set you up with them when you were in Vancouver for the. Uh, I, I, dude, I will. I will be the first guy to walk out for a fucking live Nickelback performance. Like, let me know. Like, dude. UFC, make it happen, Chris. This has been so much fun. I feel like you and I would have done this for like another thirty minutes. But we got to get you out of here. I want to leave you with the last word. I'll do my part very quick, guys. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Subscribe, tap the bell, thumbs up, all that good stuff. Let us know your official prediction for Brendan Allen versus Chris Curtis. That headlines UFC Vegas 90 on Saturday. Also, Nickelback. Overrated, underrated, appropriately rated. I think we know where Chris stands. Chris, Barrett, if you guys want to say anything to end this, I'll leave it with you. They're legends, and we're going. Barrett's prediction is knockout fourth round. <laughs> He's like, yeah. Exactly, Father. Yes. <laughs>